Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Ryan Keating. Today we're delighted to have the opportunity to interview one of New York's most eclectic performers, a woman who started with American Ballet Theater and later her, made her mark on Broadway as Tessie Tour in the original production of Gypsy. However, perhaps she is best known for originating the role of Golda in Fiddler on the Roof, for which she received a Tony Award. It's a pleasure to welcome Maria Carnilova. Maria, welcome. Hello. I've enjoyed your work for so long. Thank you. So it's a pleasure to finally meet you. Thank you. Uh, your parents were Russian immigrants. Yes. Yes, they came to America twice. <laughs> it was a ridiculous story, but it's, it's true. They, they came to America and, s and settled here, and then at a certain point when they thought they were doing well, rather well, mm -hmm. and uh, this was after the revolution, they had come before the revolution, and after the revolution they decided to go back because my mother had some property there, and they were going to show off their children and their success in America. And unfortunately, when they got there, of course, things were very bad. And, and they were trapped. They were not American citizens, and it never occurred to them that they couldn't leave Russia again. So they were interned once they returned yes, to Russia? Yes, yes. And then I, I was the youngest. I was six months old when they, took, when they went back. And I came down with the, the, with the plague that was going on in Russia at the time. Diphtheria was an epidemic at the time. And I was a little tiny baby, and I caught that. And they interned the whole family in Moscow, and we were not permitted to leave for three months until everyone was cleared. And then when we got back to the little village that they grew up in, which was Borisov outside of Minsk, uh, they found that uh, my mother's property had been confiscated, as mm -hmm. everyone else's was, and uh, the five other families were living in the house. And it became very difficult. There was famine and lots of disease. And my father was fortunate enough. He was able to escape across the border. But we stayed on. Uh, my mother and the two, three children stayed on uh, for another, I guess, five, six years. Well, that must have been very hard on your mother. Very, very. Uh, I don't know how she managed it because they were really di difficult years in Russia. So how was he able to get the rest of you out? He, he finally met um, um, a lawyer in Hartford, Connecticut, where he um, at the time was working, and um, he persuaded the lawyer to let the children... Uh, the, the children were American citizens, you see. Mm -hmm. And um, so somehow they finally managed to get us out, and uh, we uh, arrived here... Uh, very happy to be here, <laughs> particularly my mother. We were all young, but mm -hmm. my, I'm sure my mother was um, delighted to be here. Did you, well, you were six years old. Did you have a hard time assimilating to an English-speaking country? Well, no, because I joined the first grade. It wasn't so difficult for me. It was most difficult for my brother and sister. They were older, both with three years so apart. We were three years apart. And uh, particularly for my brother, he had to go back into the first grade because n none of us spoke English mm -hmm. at all. Uh, Russian was our only tongue. And I think it must have been awful for him. Uh, to, uh, and they made fun of us, you know, as all children do, that called us names. Mm -hmm. How did your mother find coming back? Did she have a hard time? Very. She never learned to speak English. Mm -hmm. um, it was very difficult for her. My father got along better. Uh, somehow he he adjusted to the way of American life much quicker than my mother did. It's said in Russia the greatest gift you can give is uh, giving your child to the arts. And that was yes. How influential was your mother on your dance training? Totally, totally. That they my brother was trained to be a violinist, my sister was trained to be a pianist, mm -hmm. and I was trained for the ballet. And when I was seven, they took me to the Metropolitan Opera House and enrolled me in the in the conservatory, which was then the way uh, you studied. There were not too many places in America you could study ballet at the time. There was Michael Fokin, there was Mordkin, uh, and um, ba uh, the, the conservatory at the Metropolitan Opera. Let's see, th those were the prominent teachers in, in New York. You had studied with a Miss Curtis at the yes, Met, and at the um, she was from a wealthy a social a family with social position. Somewhat, yes. In upstate New York she mm -hmm. was. Now, know. she wasn't allowed to perform, although she was allowed to study and teach. That's so right. what I'm curious is, have you noticed a change in um, people with social position performing? Oh, yes. They'd, they'd, they'd love to be on the stage now if they could, <laughs> I think. But you think there's still that social restriction? No. No. No, I don't think it's at all the same as it was when I was young. 
uh, it was uh, socially it was we were sort of um, I wouldn't say freaks but um, we were entertainers let's put it mm -hmm. that way ballet particularly was entertained royally by the social world and we experienced many many you know beautiful parties given for the ballet it was chic to throw parties for the ballet in the early days particularly since ballet theater was one of the first mm -hmm. major companies in America uh, it was um, the big social thing to invite the stars of the ballet to their parties uh, but uh, they weren't really part of the social <laughs> strata so to speak it was but now it's very different uh, very different we have um, most of the, uh, the social people who you call the socialites of, uh, mm -hmm. that used to be called socialites are now involved in the ballet they are fundraisers and they are uh, people who um, you know attract uh, uh, they're on the board of ballet companies. Uh, Jackie Onassis, for instance, is on the board of ballet, American Ballet Theater. And uh, Nancy Zeckendorf is on the board of, uh, uh, of ballet theater. And uh, who, uh, Susan Bliss is, is on the board of uh, Joffrey Ballet Company. So it's all quite equal now. Well, that's terrific. Uh, you had danced with the Met as well. You had made your debut with uh, Kirsten Flagstad. Yes. Yes, I was her page when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. In all the operas that she did, all the Wagnerian works that she worked in, I, was, I adored her. She gave, signed a picture to me that I treasure. Because when I went back to the Met as ballerina, years later, it was 1951-52 season when Bing first came in as, as a general manager, I was hired as ballerina. And I was to do the ballet Alceste, and she was returning to do... Uh -huh. Uh, uh, three performances of Alcestis. I mean, really, that was a glorious time for me. A reunion that was just beautiful. Because she'd remembered me as a child and was very dear, very dear. And at this time, our dressing rooms were right next to each other in the Met. <laughs> well, it must have been very fulfilling. For oh, you. boy, was it. <laughs> when you were growing up and dancing with the Met, did you have a hard time balancing your schoolwork as well as performing and studying? I don't think I was very good in school as a result of it. My, all of my attention was towards my dancing. And I was away so often because we went to Philadelphia on Tuesdays in those days. The company would travel matinee, do a matinee uh, and an evening in uh, the Academy of Music. And my schoolwork was interrupted quite frequently because of that. Mm -hmm. Your mother had passed away when you were 14. Yes. And um, you had said in previous interviews that she taught you to be very independent. How did that self-reliance help you deal with that loss? Well, it was it came in pretty handy because I, I really was on my own at 14. And I got my first good paying job. I say good paying job because I had others before that weren't so, so good paying. But I got my first good paying job when I was close to 15 and went to South America with a, an opera company in the ballet. Um, uh, and uh, that was a, a very professional job. Before that, I'd done a lot of work uh, for a year and a half with uh, at the Hippodrome with um, uh, um, Somaji when he had a, a large opera company going on there, and I had worked for Michael Fokine. But those were weekend things. Ballet had not really progressed to the point where they had large, big seasons. Mm -hmm. We had weekend stints in Lewiston Stadium and Jones Beach and Randall's Island. We did the classics, all the Fokine's works, and um, that was where I got my uh, training to, 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 to be ready and quick. And we, at those times, nobody supplied hairdressers or makeup artists. We supplied our own shoes, our own makeup, our own jewelry from the five and ten cent store. All of that was supplied. So in addition to being a dancer, you had to be a jack of all trades? A jack of all trades. There wasn't anything we couldn't do, and, and snap to in a minute. Mm -hmm. I think that's the real uh, definition of the word gypsy in my mind. Uh, I think it started that way because so many years ago, dancers did everything. Uh, step in at a moment's notice. You didn't have to be assigned to be an understudy. You knew all the roles if you were ambitious. Mm -hmm. You stood in the wings and watched everyone. <laughs> you wanted to get ahead so badly. You had made your uh, Broadway debut with Jerome Robbins in Stars in Your Eyes. That's right, yeah. And uh, what were your first perceptions of him? 
Oh, well, I'd, um, I don't even remember him from Stars and Your Eyes, frankly. <laughs> Uh, that was so, you see, I was quite young, and uh, I don't think we'd ever met before that show. He was in another show before that with, uh, with the dancers that, got, that, be, that came into Stars Near Eyes with Alicia Alonso and Nora Kay and, and um, Fernando Alonso and Paul Gottkin, you know, quite a few uh, prominent dancers. Uh, but I, I was so young, and, and I didn't really notice... Jerry Robbins very much. I was too involved in my own work. And after all, we were only in the chorus. Mm -hmm. You know, we hadn't begun to dance. He wasn't my partner or anything at that, at that point. I met him later on in Ballet Theatre, uh, which was about a year later. How would you compare the difference? Because I'm sure the Broadway environment is very different from Ballet Theatre. Mm, yes, of course it was, because uh, the the Broadway was uh, was um, exciting, but uh, and a lot of money. I, mean, I think Broadway paid us more than ballet did, did at that time, although the salaries were quite low by comparison to today's money <laughs> <laughs> with the rate of inflation. But um, no, the ballet was something that we wanted all our lives. When we finally got into a, a major company. It was the dream that we wished for all the time, that we'd only had little tastes of for the weekends with Michael Fulking before. Mm -hmm. And this was a reality now. There, here we were, a large, large company. We had, um, I can't remember offhand, but I think we had about 20 soloists, 20 ballerinas and soloists of all kinds from all over the world. And uh, our quarter ballet was quite large. And it was really a major company with a large repertoire. I think we had 20 ballets in the repertoire right from the beginning, just like that. So it was certainly very pioneering. Oh, yes. I consider that we were pioneers of that time. Uh, speaking of pioneers, Agnes de Mille is really the first choreographer to put use, utilize ballet in musical theater. Uh, no. 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 Uh, it was um, a Balanchine, as a matter of fact. Uh, he came way ahead of Agnes. Balanchine did, the, his very first one was the, was uh, On Your Toes. That's right. Yeah, um, uh, and ballet was incorporated at that time. And then he did many more with the Dwight D. Wyman. Uh, uh, Agnes came, I think her first ballet in, in music, in Broadway, on Broadway was in 1943. It was Oklahoma. Oklahoma, yes. But it seemed every subsequent musical to Oklahoma had to have a ballet. Yes, well, ballet became popular when Balanchine started to do it on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he made uh, several of his wives popular <laughs> that way. On, <laughs> Tamara Jeva started on Broadway, and she was married to Balanchine. In, in, uh, and then he made um, Zorina famous with Anya, uh, 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 I Married an Angel, um, who he was married to at the time. So he, he really is, has the, the honor of being the first one to put ballet on Broadway. Well, that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. You had uh, appeared in Call Me Mister, and uh, it's been said you were the only non-service dancer. That's right. <laughs> well, they couldn't find a whack or a wave who'd been in the service, <laughs> and so they hired me. <laughs> but I think our choreographer, uh, John, uh, Johnny Ray, uh, was a Hollywood man, and he uh, was very... Um, impressed with ballet and liked it a great deal. Mm -hmm. And when he saw me in the group uh, auditioning, uh, he spotted me from ballet theater, and I became the ballerina of that show. Now, this is where you met your husband. Yes. And he had just come out of the service. Mm -hmm. He was a, a soldier. <laughs> he had just come back from Manila. What were your first impressions of him? I didn't notice him the first year. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the truth comes out. I didn't. I was too occupied, uh, too busy and uh, I don't know I was not uh, it, uh, it wasn't ready for romance at that particular time in my life and uh, I thought that uh, he was dating uh, one other girl in the show so I, I didn't uh, think anything <laughs> about that at the time it you happened a year later we were in the show for two years mm -hmm. and in the second year I noticed him <laughs> 
he made himself felt very strongly mm -hmm. on the second year. I'm sure. <laughs> you, had been, you had had a previous marriage to um, a Yugoslav dancer, which in one press release was described as brief and tempestuous. But, uh, yes, a brief and tempestuous. <laughs> <laughs> I won't embarrass you by asking you to elaborate on it, but you had had Quite a son right. from that. Yes, uh, he was a, it was a, it was a, not a marriage made in heaven. It was not, mm -hmm. wasn't meant to be, but he was a very wonderful and very a beautiful man. Uh, and I have a son by him, uh, a very beautiful, wonderful son. Uh, so I, uh, I don't regret that at all. It was a very good experience. Uh, it wasn't meant to last. But Did you find being a single mother in the 40s, because certainly divorce was not as prevalent then as it is today, did you find there was any social stigma attached to that? It was very difficult, very difficult. It was very difficult to travel with a child, and I was forced to off and on. Mm -hmm. um, I tried not to, um, but uh, it was very difficult uh, uh, to have a child. and uh, That's the reason I left Ballet Theatre, and uh, I preferred to have the child than to go on in the company. Mm -hmm. I don't regret that either. <laughs> I'm I think that uh, had I stayed with the ballet, it might have been um, my whole life. And I, by leaving it and having a child, I found that I became diversified and, and, and I, mm -hmm. I grew from that. I didn't know anything much more than my toe shoes and my tights. And, and the ribbons on my toe shoes and the ballets that I was dancing and the rehearsals that I was having and the choreographers that I was working with. It's such a small world and it's so tight and it have, you have to concentrate so hard to get ahead in that world. There's so much competition um, that I, I really was a very tiny, narrow little person. I feel that um, after I left the ballet, I... I began to read, I began to know other things in life. Well, one thing Gwen Verdon had said in an interview was that if you want to succeed in theater today, you have to be a triple threat in terms of being able to sing, dance, and act because of production costs as well as other factors. At what point did you start taking singing lessons? When I had to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> when I wanted to earn money and, and I had to get a job, and so I started taking singing lessons. When I was encouraged by my husband all the time, who was a fabulous singer. And um, I was encouraged by many friends to try to act. And, and I wanted to stay in the theater in some capacity. So I played around. You know, I had two kids by that time. And I, I, um, I played around with being a dancer. I went back to that. And I would do performances at Jacob's Pillow. And I would, I would study acting with my friends. I studied with, um, with uh, Herbert Berghoff for a mm -hmm. little while. And um, I wanted to audition for shows and plays and things. I did. Uh, when you started to have a romantic involvement with uh, Mr. Irving, uh, did you find that having a child presented its own sort of problems? Because certainly when he married you, he had an instant family. Uh, well, that might have been his problem, but I never had any problem with it. <laughs> I don't think he had a problem with it. He might have. He would have mentioned it by now. It's been 36 years mm -hmm. that we've been married. <laughs> I think I would have had a little inkling if he had found any problem with it. No, as a matter of fact, he became a father to my son immediately. And uh, their relationship has always been wonderful. Uh, um, no, I think he loved having an immediate, an instant family. I think he liked that very much. Well, I'm sure having a marriage of 36 years by any standards is pretty good, but by show business standards, it's probably something short of a miracle. Did you find um, what sort of problems were presented because you were both, you were concentrating on your dancing, and he, I believe, wanted to be a celebrated leader singer? What kind of problems? Mostly they were financial, really, in the beginning. Other than that, uh, they were mostly financial problems. It was very difficult to get ahead. Uh, um, with two children, it was very hard to concentrate on our careers fully. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband did several concerts at Carnegie Hall, sang for a while with New York City Opera. But we both found that going to Broadway was the quickest way to make money. Isn't that a terrible thing to admit? But it was fun, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was fun, and we made much more money and, and less um, a heartache, uh, much less rehearsal time. Um, 
because when you get into a show, you have a three-week rehearsal period, a four-week rehearsal period, and that's it. And then you get it, you know, go out of town for a short period, and you're back, and you have a run if you're lucky. And if you're not lucky, you're home taking care of the kids again. <laughs> <laughs> now you made big head waves on Broadway when you uh, were featured in Gypsy as Tessie Tura. Yeah, you know, that was a total shock to me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite understand, um, but uh, you know, I didn't understand how much fun that role was to uh, to the public. Mm -hmm. What were your uh, impressions when you walked in at the audition? Because if I'm not mistaken, you auditioned with uh, real enthusiasts. I I was terrified, and I didn't really know what I was reading. <laughs> they had only given me sides as is due a small part. You know, I didn't come out to the second act, and I only had one scene with Merman. Mm -hmm. And um, then that little dance with the other two girls, I didn't take, you know, I didn't think it was a big enough part to get all excited about. It seemed awfully small, so they gave me little sides. I, I didn't know what it was about, because I wasn't used to studying scripts. And luckily for me, my husband was kind enough to, <laughs> to help me out and give me an inkling what this woman's character was about. I had no idea what I was reading. And my husband said, well, she's a burlesque queen. And, and so I, I went to, a, I think he, my, my dear husband went to a library and got a photographic book about, of burlesque mm -hmm. dancers. And I searched through this book to find an image someone that I could imitate, you know, just getting a, a visual image of some particular character. And there was no one in there that, that I could possibly relate to. They were all so sexy looking. I was rather thin in those days when I danced. I didn't look quite the way I do today. I, and most of them had enormous boobs, and, and they were very sexy looking. And I could not relate to that. And on the, at the back of the book, there was one little girl in a, in a tap costume. She had a brassiere, and she didn't have very large breasts. And she had this funny little crinkly hair that was done with electric iron, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And she looked just as if she was saying, I'm dancing, I'm not showing off my body. And I, so I used her mm -hmm. as, a, as an image, and that helped. It was, it was terrific. Just looking at that picture did it for me. And I found a, a lady to base my character on. Uh, you had said of Tessie that it was hard to keep the part in character, or hard to keep the character from becoming cheap, once you clued into what it was all about. Yes, well, uh, I, I didn't want her to be cheap, because in the picture she wasn't really. You know, she looked like a pathetic lady who, who wanted to pretend that she was a dancer, mm -hmm. really, and that's what she was doing there. And so I, I played her like that. And as a matter of fact, uh, Arthur Lawrence wrote in a line, I myself was once a ballerina. <laughs> it was just a line that was written in because of the way I played it. <laughs> and because I had been. So he put that line in especially, and it was a funny line. Uh, this had uh, preceded O Calcutta by about 10 years, and yet it was considered very shocking, I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> they used to be gasps when I said tough titty. Can you believe it? That's only how many years ago? Twenty-five years ago. Twenty-five years ago. Yeah, I said tough titty, and and I said go screw, and my goodness, it was I raised the roof. People used to go. Oh! <laughs> Just imagine what changes have taken place since then. Uh, what were your children's reaction to their mother as a stripper? I don't think they cared <laughs> one way or another. They were busy with their lives. Uh, they didn't. Uh, I, they didn't come to the theater all the time. They came always opening nights. They come to everything we do. Mm -hmm. They've always done that. But after that, they don't come again unless we have to meet for dinner or something. Uh, they're not all that drawn into it. Because one of the articles I read was um, they would tell everybody within four rows that that was their mother. <laughs> oh, yes. When they came opening night, they always did that. Mm -hmm. They'd be excited. Opening night is so excited for everybody, especially when they were young. They would tell everyone that that's just my mommy. But I th that people, <laughs> I I have a hard put to, not to say to people that's my husband when I go <laughs> to see one of his openings. I get so excited and I'm so happy for him mm -hmm. that I'd like to poke the next person and say I'm his wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's terrific. You had uh, originated the role of Gold in Fiddler on the Roof, yeah. which um, when you read the script, it seems that. You could almost make her a caricature. 
Well, that's the trap in any part now, isn't it? Uh, I try to avoid... Um, I try to avoid playing a part the way I first see it, because my first impression of it is would be how big, how many lines are there, <laughs> and how big a part is it. Uh, I think all actors do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think Fiddler was was not very difficult for me because I'm basically a, from peasant stock, and having a Russian nature. I don't think there's so much difference between an Italian mother and a Jewish mother and a Russian mother, an Irish mother. Uh, it's just that the play was so great. Sholem Aleichem wrote such wonderful lines. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I felt this woman very deeply because I understood the peasant woman of that era who suffered so greatly from poverty and from, um, you know, being... Um, well, the Jews were highly uh, oppressed, and and, uh, and uh, I felt that the Russian peasants were too before the revolution. Uh, so I could understand that. I could relate to it very easily. When you had opened initially in Detroit, the reviews were very mixed. There weren't any. There weren't any. No, it oh, was so a it was a, a newspaper mess. strike mm -hmm. during the time, and there weren't any reviews. There was just one review in Variety, and it was written by some man who knew nothing of the theater, obviously, because he said <laughs> it was a very ethnic show and it would not go at all. It was, yeah, he, he wasn't pleased with it at all. And then we opened it in Washington and the roof came down. People would stand outside in droves waiting for the cast to come out just to yell bravo on the street. Mm -hmm. And then we knew we had a terrific hit. But the, uh, the, 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 I don't think the, the producers or the directors, no, none of us knew what a great great success that would be. Why do you think it was so phenomenally successful? It was a brilliantly written show. It was a masterpiece. And when something is that well written, anybody can play it. Mm -hmm. Of course, we were very good in it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody was as good as I was in the part, but it's easy to play those lines because mm -hmm. they're so brilliant. Well, I can remember one thing uh, Margaret Hamilton said about the success of The Wizard of Oz. It has to do with home, and when you have a piece that deals with that, then it's something everybody can relate to. Yeah, that's right. And well, the fiddlers like that. It's about a family, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter whether they're Jewish family or because they did it in Japan, they did it in Germany, they did it in France, they did it. They did it all over the world. And the fact that that they were a family and the problems of a family, uh, I think that. Everyone related to it, and everybody could understand it. Mm -hmm. You won a Tony Award for Golda, yes. as we mentioned in the top of the mm -hmm. show. Now, we had done an interview with Kelly Bishop, who won a Tony Award for a chorus line, and uh, she had said that it doesn't guarantee you freedom from lining up at an audition. Now, how doesn't give you anything <laughs> <laughs> except that little round disc. <laughs> now, Hal Prince had made you audition for Zorba. Yes. And how did you find that experience? Uh, so frightening because I had to have an accent. I was so frightened that I blew it. Mm -hmm. I had to stop my audition and say, please forgive me and let me gather my senses for a moment. And he did. I sat there for a few minutes and uh, got my, my head pulled back together and started all over again. And then I was fine and got the part. But I don't know whether I would have gotten it anyway. I, I, I don't know of another woman on Broadway that could have done it, frankly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Walter Kerr had said when it opened that it succeeds best with its dark side, and Madame Horn Hortense has had a life that's uh, been long, full of hopes and fears. What were your first impressions when you read it? Oh, I loved that role. I thought that the role of that woman was so rich, so big, and so wonderfully uh, diversified. It was so many things. How many times do you get a chance to sing, dance, be funny? be sad, be young, mm -hmm. be old, and die, all in one show. <laughs> I mean, that's terrific. Well, I don't think as a performer you could really ask for I'll that never get another chance like that. <laughs> I'd said that the deathbed scene uh, in which the costume made sisters out of childhood and death uh, gave quite a few members of the audience a different perception of their own mortality. How did the role change your perception of 
your life? Oh, I don't, I don't think I permit any role to change my perception of life considering the fact that it is just a role. Um, it changed... I, I don't think that it affected my life in any way. Uh, if, if, if anything, it just led me to disappointments because I could never get a part as good as that again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing that it might have done. Uh, yes, I always regretted and, uh, that I never had another chance to do another great show, another great part. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing you had said that one lesson you would have learned as a child is to love. Could you elaborate on that a little? How it's helped you? Oh, well, it's helped me because I have so many friends. Friends that I've kept from my childhood, from my very, from my youth in the mm-hmm. ballet, and they're still very close to me. I still see them all the time. And I have my children that love me, and I love them a great deal. And I have my husband that loves me, and I, and I love him a great deal. And I think that takes a lot of effort to love someone. Um, that's what I learned. I, it, you have to work hard at love. Love doesn't just come mm-hmm. easily. I have to work hard at making my children love me. I mean, making them. That sounds... Making myself lovable. That, that's what I mean by that. I have to work at making myself lovable to them and useful to them. And, and uh, I want them to need me. Then they love me. And that's what I think is love. Well, you've been very blessed. Our time is up. I so appreciate taking time to talk to you. Thank you very much. So nice to meet you. Thank you very much. It was wonderful to meet you. Thank you. This is Ryan Keating, and you've been watching Spotlight. Our guest today has been Maria Karnelova. If you have any comments or suggestions, or if you'd like to receive our program guide, you can write to myself in care of Piro Productions, 640 10th Avenue, New York, New York, 10036. Spotlight airs on Manhattan Cable's channel D Tuesday evenings at 8.30 and again on channel C Wednesday mornings at 1 a.m. and Saturday mornings at 11.30. Until next week, this is Ryan Keating. Have a good week. You look handsome. You look wonderful. You, you photograph magnificent.